Hello, this will be a quick tutorial on the Substance Painter Fur Brush and Transition Filter by Eslar, available here on Gumroad. I've gotten a lot of questions on how to get started with this kind of brush collection thing here. So I uh, figured I'd do a quick tutorial for everyone. So when you load in this brush, it's going to come, uh, give you these four different items here, a base material, the smart material itself, a brush, and a transition filter. And we're gonna use all four of those uh, on uh, just a small section of this HD Tosca Pupper that we got here. The first thing you're gonna do is you're going to take the fur brush smart material, drag that into your layer, and we're gonna have to wait for that to uh, do some drawing. So just wait for the thing to load. Okay, once that's loaded in, you're gonna have uh, a banana, at least in the default colors. And you'll see that we populated a whole bunch of things over on the right hand side in our layer stack. It's kind of starting from the bottom. There's gonna be the fur data layer. This is where we're going to put the actual fur brush information. A bunch of color layers with masks. And we'll get back to those. That's where we're gonna do all the magic basically. And then some blending and kind of a, a high level container for the whole thing. So to get started, we're just gonna do a small section on the thigh here, just to kind of show how this all works and how you would proceed with doing the entire avatar. And we're gonna start by going to our fur data layer. All right, and we're going to want to use the fur brush tool preset and the fur brush base material. Make sure those are both loaded in. Now, depending on your exact version and whether or not Substance Painter wants to work properly, there's a couple of settings that you want to make sure are selected in this parameters list here. The first one being that we want follow path to be on. That way, when you do a stroke, the brush will actually, uh, the fur will follow the direction of that brush stroke so that you can control the direction of the fur. We also want these fur stamps to go down with a good amount of randomness. And so you want to make sure under dynamic stroke, we want to have a random seed with random per stamp. This will also make uh, symmetric stamps. So if you have symmetry on, it'll make the stamps on either side also random. So you don't just end up with a symmetric fur pattern, a completely symmetric fur pattern. Once you got those set, now you can do some brush strokes. The first time that you do a brush stroke, it's gonna have to do some drawing, so it's going to take a little bit of time. We'll let that draw out. All right, so we put that down. Let me just shift the lighting over so we can kind of see a little bit better. And you can see we've laid down some fur. Now, subsequent brush strokes should be a lot faster, right? See how it's kind of doing it a bit more real time. It might still be a bit slow, if it's painfully slow, like worse than this, remember that you can always go into your texture set settings up in the top right, and you can move to something less than 4K. It will automatically export and upsample to whatever you set, set it at export. Uh, but just remember that it's gonna have to do a long draw cycle if you're exporting to something different than your working resolution. I also like to just leave it on the, the output resolution so I can see the detail that I'm gonna end up with. Okay, so now that we've put down this fur data layer, how do we kind of get some uh, some colors in here? So I'm just gonna go ahead and just delete some of these other colors, just to kind of show, this is how I like to work. Now the base color is pretty straightforward, it's just gonna be a solid fill color. Um, for the sake of this, I don't know, let's just do uh, like a white, something like that. And then let's say we want to have a uh, uh, another color. So let's make a fill layer. And let's make this fill layer, I don't know, blue. Looks good. And we, how, so how then we actually kind of add this to the, the fur brush is we need to add the fur transition filter, um, that other thing that we had down in the bottom left to this layer. Now you want to make sure you don't add this to the color, not to the fill. We need to add it to a mask layer. So we're going to go ahead and make a black mask. Of course, everything's going to disappear. And to this black mask, we're going to add a filter and we're going to add the fur brush transition filter. 
Now there's a couple of options in here and we'll get back to one of them in particular. The main things you're gonna look at is the transition type. So whether it's the base or the tips, base is fur that's deeper in, tips is fur that's shallower. There's a couple of settings which determine kind of how much it fills in and how it behaves at edge cases. And we'll make some adjustments there. For the base layer, I like to use something like these settings, like a 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. Next, we need to link this uh, transition filter to our fur data layer, which is an anchor, anchored layer. So we need to click on this and go over to anchor points and ass assign it to that fur data layer that we put down. Now it'll be good to go. We can go back into our um, mask layer. Let's just get a standard brush out now. So now we're just painting color. And if I just give it some brush strokes, you can see that we're putting down the base layer. Now you'll notice there's some white fur. Let me just paint in a bit more of this. There's some white fur that's coming through. There's gonna be some tips leakage in there. When we put the tips layer on, that will go away. What do I mean by that? Okay, so now this, we got this, we got this down, but we wanna make this a little bit more dynamic. So what I like to do is now define my tips layers. So for example, for the base, the white, we're going to add a new fill layer. We're just gonna make this completely white. We're going to assign a mask because remember we need to assign the fur brush transition filter to a mask. We can't do it to the color layer. So we're just going to add a white mask. This is our base layer and add our fur brush transition filter. Now we're going to add this as a base and sorry, instead of as the tips. And just so you can see what this is going to do, let's assign it to that fur transition layer, that fur height uh, data layer that we assigned earlier. For the tip settings, I like to do about a 0 0.4, 0 0.4, doesn't have to be exact, and about a 0 0.7. Whoa, you can immediately see some stuff happen there. And if I turn this layer on and off, you can kind of see that we've added some dynamic kind of range to this. And obviously this is a very simple setup. You can add all kinds of different shadings and so on to this. Just kind of highlighting the, the basics. We want to do the same kind of thing to that blue layer but we wanna keep the, the mask that we already defined. So what I'm gonna do is Control D to duplicate. And let's make this a brighter blue. I like to make my tips layer a little bit brighter and a little bit less saturated. Go into here, into its for transition filter, and we'll just use those same tip settings that we applied down there. So tips, about 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0.7. Depending on how you copied this, you might have to reassign the anchor point. And that's kind of it, really. On the Along the edges here, you might have some issues because the mask gets pulled in a little bit further. And so you might have to come in here and manually paint it down, something like that. Um, but otherwise, this should be good to go. Hopefully, this is a good starting point for anyone that's looking to get into this brush. Uh, if there's extra uh, requests for it, I could also go through how I would then go and set this up in something like Pyomi uh, for, for Unity and VR chat as well. Anyways, hopefully you found this tutorial useful. Uh, please comment down below if you'd like to see anything else. Bye bye.